Good evening, parents and families, and welcome to Open House 2020. My name is Miss Hunter, and I'm so excited to welcome you to our eighth grade English language arts class. Can you believe it that your babies are now in eighth grade? I always like to start my open house with my contact information. I think it's really important that we keep an open dialogue as this year goes on, especially with your students being online. So first is my Remind 101 app. If you are unfamiliar with this, it is an app that allows you to communicate with me at any time. It also allows me to send you reminders, announcements, and updates. Of course, email, as always, is an option. I just warn you that I only check my email two to three times a day, and it's a lot harder for me to get to it when I'm in the middle of teaching. The Remind app makes it quick and easy for me to respond, and if it is something that needs a lot more attention, then I am able to provide that attention to it. So I'll leave that slide here for a second. Clearly, the technology is loving this. Oh, all right. We will revisit this slide again, but we're going to keep on going. So my whole focus this year is making sure that we strengthen your students' understanding and proficiency in English language arts. Uh, we are going to do that by reading a lot of literature and informational text. We're going to analyze those things. We're going to talk about novels. We're going to read a ton of novels. We're going to do a lot of critical thinking. My favorite is going to be their essay prompts, which I know they're super excited about. And then, of course, finding unique and different ways to collaborate with peers, especially in this online setting. Their class textbook is going to be only online. So in order to access it, they know to go to the Duval County website, to go to the My HWR icon, and to go to the ebook. I think the biggest issue we've had at this point is they all keep forgetting they're in eighth grade. And so they keep going into the sixth or seventh grade book. So just if they are having issues finding an assignment or they keep complaining that I'm not on the same book or page that they are, uh, just remind them to make sure that they are in the eighth grade book. I know that has been a problem a couple of times so far in class. With us being online, technology is going to be a big part of their learning. They have to be able to send and receive emails through Outlook. They can find that through the OneView webmail link. They need to be able to be uh, avid users of Teams. So if Teams is still something they're struggling with, I encourage you to reach out and I can do a one-on-one -on -one with them on how to navigate it. Focus is going to be crucial. They need to be able to upload assignments. They need to be able to watch their grades. And whenever they see a grade drop, they need to be able to recover that grade as soon as possible so that they don't become overwhelmed in the end. If you as a parent have not opened up a parent portal on Focus, I do encourage you to reach out to the school and make that happen as soon as possible. Online learning is such a different element for a lot of these kids, and they're going to need your support, and they're going to need your attention when it comes to their grades. Achieve 3000, we're going to talk about it in a minute, but obviously a big part of our curriculum. And then Common Lit, we will use mm, semi-regularly, often for like assessment pieces, just to track and see how they are doing. With Achieve 3000, I do uh, require that students complete two articles a week. Those articles are going to be assigned on Monday and they are going to be due on Sunday night. When they complete these articles, my expectation is that they're achieving a 75% or higher, and that's on their first attempt. That means they cannot do the stretch article and the regular article. They need to do one, and that very first try, they're going to score a 75 or higher. They must also always complete a thought question. Now, because your uh, students are online and I know Achieve is going to be a big part of their curriculum in a lot of classes, I will be nice and occasionally give them articles that don't have a thought question. I like to tell them that's their free pass or break. But if there is a thought question, the requirement is that they complete it. If they do not complete the thought question, they cannot receive full credit for my class. And that is because in order for these students to make growth and learn this year, they're going to have to read, they're going to have to write. And I believe that the only way we will be able to be high school ready for next year is if they're constantly writing. What that looks like is doing short response, doing essays, and of course, you know, something as simple and basic as a thought question. I will grade them hard on them. I will make sure that their grammar, their spelling uh, are all correct, that they're using that basic 
understanding of how to answer a question and those strategies they've been taught up to this point. But if your student seems to be struggling with thought questions, please do not hesitate to reach out or have them reach out. And I can walk them through a couple of those until they feel more confident. All of their work is going to be submitted online. In order to do that, they're going to have to download documents regularly through Focus or Teams. They need to make sure that they read all the directions before getting started. Again, we've only been in school for a little bit, but I've already seen this be a little bit of a problem. So they need to make sure that they read the directions on the assignment. And then they need to make sure that they're saving that document as the name of the assignment and their name or vice versa, that their name is in the title and the name of the assignment is in the title. Once they have done that, they're going to upload it to Focus. I do not allow students to email me their work, and that is just because I receive a lot of emails every day, and it's very easy for their work to end up at the bottom of that pile or mixed up with something else. So I do require that they upload it to Focus. This is also a great resource because it tells us what time they submitted it, uh, whether it was late or not. And then, of course, the document is right there should we have to access it later. So please make sure that your students know how to work focus. They know how to upload uh, assignments. And if there's ever an issue, I mean, obviously, technology does have its quirks. If there's ever an issue, then I ask that they reach out to me as soon as possible so we can get that issue addressed and we can fix the problem so that way they are on track, on time, and receiving full credit. I do offer, I do offer tutoring uh, on Tuesdays and Thursdays after school by appointment only. It is virtually for all my students. It doesn't matter if they're face-to-face -face or online. This is just because of COVID. Um, as we find our new sense of normalcy, I will offer it in person and that will reach out to you guys as well. Uh, as far as setting up an appointment, I ask that you give me about 24 hours notice. If these dates don't work for you, that's fine with me. Just communicate that with that. Just communicate that with me and we will find a day or time that works better for you. I have a pretty flexible schedule. I want to make sure that your students are getting the most out of this year. We are going to cover a lot of material. They are going to be responsible for a lot of different things. And I want to make sure that they're ready for anything that comes next year. So if you think tutoring is going to be essential for your kids' achievement, then please reach out and let's figure out when works for you and let's set that up as soon as possible. My grading policy is pretty simple. I don't have weighted categories. I do change the point values based off the rigor of the assignment. Uh, some assignments might be worth 30 points. Others are going to be worth 100 points. Their overall grade will be anywhere from an F to an A, and that's the typical grading scale that you will see. In order for an assignment to receive full credit, they have to turn it in on time. So I do take off 10 points per week. That is not day, that is per week that an assignment is late. So if they turn it in two weeks late, they are going to lose that 20 points. I do ask that they really stay on top of their work. They do get uh, really focused and make sure that they're submitting things when they are due. I have a little bit of leniency the first month or so, uh, but after that I do start tightening the reins, and a lot of times that's where we see those grades kind of struggle. So if they have poor grades, it's possibly just because they're not submitting it in on time. And I also work really hard to post and update grades regularly through Focus. Uh, I do teach in person and online though, so a lot of times it's really hard for me to post anything during the day. So if you feel like you, your student has submitted an assignment and they haven't gotten a grade yet, please just be patient or reach out to me and I will communicate with you guys on what's going on there. Attendance is going to be required even though we are online and attendance means that they are in class on time and they are present and they are there for the entire length of the live meeting. Um, I know that being tardy is going to happen just because of technology issues. The problem is when they are tardy or they are missing class, they end up missing a lot of information and it makes it really difficult for these guys to get back on track and with everybody else. So if they are going to miss class, if they are running late, they need to go back into Teams. They need to watch the recordings of the live. They need to make sure they're getting all the assignments done from Teams. And then, of course, just verifying through Focus. 
they can always email me and let me know if they're going to miss that class or if they were running late, those kinds of things. And I'll make sure that I catch them up on whatever they missed. They do get one day for each day they miss. With us being online, it's really important that they communicate those absent days because I might mark them absent when they're not, but I might also mark them present thinking I saw them or talked to them or that they did complete their warm up and they did not. So really communication here is going to be essential. And then of course they need to make sure they're still turning in assignments that were due the day they were absent. So of course, just making sure they're staying on top of that work. I do like to make the distinction that grade recovery and makeup work are not the same and students who have to recover poor grades need to reach out to me. Uh, right now I've been letting them just recover the original assignment, but as this year goes on, I may not allow them to do the original assignment, especially if it's already been reviewed. So what that means is if they miss an assignment, assignment, I might give them a alternative assignment that meets the same standards. Um, if they fail an assignment just because they failed one specific part of it, one specific standard, then I might give them an alternative assignment that focuses on that. So please, before they start grade recovery, they need to reach out to me. Again, makeup work, very different story. If they were absent, then they're going to complete the assignment they missed. Don't get those two confused. And of course, make sure if you're reaching out to me about one or the other that you are very clear so I can make sure that your student gets what they need. All right, I feel like I've talked very fast for the last 12 minutes and hopefully you got what you needed out of this. But if not, we come back to my contact information. Please reach out to me. Please ask questions. Please let me know if you have thoughts, questions, concerns. You just want to say, hey, I think that communication is going to be the most important thing this year, that it is going to be our strength. And so I want you guys to touch base with me. I want you guys to get to know me. Um, I obviously look forward to this year. It's a little weird being online. I haven't gotten to really meet any of your kids other than the Hey's and buys and little bit here and there, but so far they are very exceptional and I have enjoyed every minute I've gotten to be with them online. Um, I'm excited for what this year has in store. I look forward to growing with you guys, learning with you guys, and just really making sure that these students are ready for whatever is to come. Eighth grade's a tough year. It's a transition year going into ninth grade. And I'm really excited to be a part of that with them. So again, please don't hesitate to reach out. Thank you for stopping by. And I look forward to getting to know all of you. Have a good one.